up on the side side. Kilo Alpha 46, Pooh Bear Hamel by 297. Hey, we got you in, Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed and the Beginner's Guide to CB Radio. And this is part four. We're up to part four already. Now, on the previous part, part three, we set up a mobile antenna. We set up a mag mount on my car. We talked briefly about impedance matching and standing wave ratio and how important it is to get your SWR as low as possible to prevent damage to the radio. We'll recap on SWR in this video, but on this one, I wanna talk about setting up your first home-based CB antenna. I've talked at some length about CB antennas and we've had opinions in other videos. I think the bottom line is, is other than a radio where if you don't get on with the hobby, you can sell the radio, get most of your money back. An antenna is not such an easy proposition. It's not something that you can quickly wrap up in the post and, and sell on eBay. For this video, um, I'm gonna keep it simple and we're gonna look at the most basic CB antenna that you can get. And it's what I started with, and that's the old silver rod. Typically around 35 pounds now in the UK delivered. So it's not expensive. It's basic, but they certainly work. I started with one on a pole, just like I'm gonna show you in a moment when we go into the garden. Literally set it up two meters off the ground on a pole, and that's what got me started, and I was able to get contacts. Putting up a full-sized 18-foot CB antenna, especially if you're like me, you live surrounded by houses on a modern housing estate. It's got to be something you do with caution. It doesn't matter how well you got on with your neighbours. Although people put up satellite dishes all over the place, you stick up a CB antenna and straight away it gets people's attention. This is why I first set mine up on a pole, very low in the garden, just to see the reaction from my neighbours, to see if anyone would notice it, to see if anyone would mention it or complain. And when no one complained about that, after a couple of months, I increased the length of the pole, got it a little bit higher, just secured it on the side of my shed, left that again for a few months, no one complained. Gradually edged it up, edged it up, until I was confident that no one was gonna make a complaint to me or the council, and then eventually I bolted it on the side of my house where it has stayed, and fingers crossed, no one has ever made any complaint. Mostly you will need planning permission to mount an antenna permanently on the side of your house. It will depend on your local council. There is no government restriction now to the height of the antenna, but there normally is on local council. If you've mounted it on a freestanding pole and it's not attached to your house, that is a freestanding structure. And although it might upset some of your neighbours, um, normally, normally there's very little they can do legally to get you to take it down. In just a second, we're gonna go out into the garden and I will set up my silver rod antenna two meters from the deck exactly as I started. And we'll adjust it to get a safe SWR. It's difficult for me to show you how to get the SWR on all antennas because they're all different, they change. Some antennas, you would get the top of the antenna, it will slide up and down to adjust it. Uh, the IMAX, 2000 also the Solicon and the Antron 99 they have tuning rings around the base part of the antenna the silver rod is quite good because you adjust the bottom section and that just makes the whole thing a lot easier and I'll show you how I do that in a second but anyway let's go downstairs let's get it set up and let me show you how I started Old, trusty silver rod been outside a few years now so what I'm going to do here is, is pretty much the same as I did with the mobile antenna I'm just going to put a few reference marks along the length of the antenna with the sharpie and that will just help me when it comes to adjust the SWR. The silver rod antenna is made up of tubular aluminium sections and they're held together with jubilee clips. Fully extended like it is here it's just over 18 foot in length. Just on a short pole then two meters off the ground. It's high enough that it won't affect the SWR. Now when it comes to adjusting this, obviously we need to reach up to that first clip. You could use a step ladder, but my preferred method is just to simply tilt the antenna over on this heavy cast iron base stand. That way I can get to the first Jubilee clip and slide the antenna up and down. We'll talk more about coaxial choices for outside antennas at the end of the video. For this experiment, I picked up a 10 meter RG58 
patch lead with the coaxial plugs already soldered on and that was a bit of a problem as we'll come to that in just a second. All right, this is quite interesting. I've just put the antenna into the radio and there's nothing on the meter on the meter at all. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, there's no receive at all. So straight away that is telling me that I might have a problem and when I key up, if you can watch the SWR meter It makes no difference if I put that in the REF position now. Here we go again. So that is end stopping. So that's telling me that I've got a problem. So I've got either got a short on the coaxial cable or out there I've got a short on the antenna, which is possible because that's been laying in the garden for a number of years. So when you get this situation, um, the first thing to do is try to eliminate as many things as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to disconnect the SWR meter and put the antenna directly into the radio and just see if we get a receive signal. Then I can eliminate the meter from the problem and the patch lead. Right, that is the antenna now, straight into the radio and straight away there is no signal on the display, so it means I've got a problem. I'm just going to wiggle the cable around. Oh, there you, oh, hang on. Yeah, there you go. Hope you can. I'm getting a signal. So there's a problem with my long connection lead on, in that plug. Some things become broken, so I need to um, strip that down and investigate, and probably resolder the uh, plug, which is easier than having to dismantle the antenna and clean that. I'm suspecting that some, one of those little braids, uh, copper braids there, which is the earth thing, I'm suspecting that short, shorted on the pin. So what I've done, I, I've just unscrewed that until it was tight to stretch those out. And I'm going to put that back in the radio and then we'll see how we get, get along. I mean, this is only for testing. Um, ideally, I would need to unsolder this, check it all out and resolder it just to be on the safe side. But let me plug it in and see if that's fixed it. Okay, yeah, that seems to have temporarily fixed the problem, but I say I wouldn't be happy with that. I would have to resolder that, but at the moment, we can see that the antenna is picking up a signal and it is receiving. So I can now go ahead and see if we can get an SWR. We're going to set this radio up today for the UK 40. So, like before, I'm on channel 20. In, that's dead in the middle. That will get me a baseline reading. Can I put it to the forward, the FWD position now on the meter? Key up the radio, and then we'll set that needle till it's right across on the end there where it says set. We're now going to return that switch to the REF setting and take the reading. Yep, and there you go. So we've got an SWR of about four at the moment, so that's too high, that's in danger of damaging the radio. So we're going to go outside, and what we're going to do now is we're going to lower the antenna. It's fully extended at the moment. We're going to lower it down, and then we're going to come back and take another reading. Using that heavy cast iron base, it's a simple case of laying the antenna over on the grass and then I'm undoing the very first Jubilee clip. I'm going to twist and slide the pole down and what I'm going to do is set it on that first mark as a reference point. I got quite lucky here, as you'll see in a moment. Back in the shack again. So we just need to put it into the FWD position there, key up, and we have to adjust it again because the calibration would have been altered. There we go. And then back to the REF. Oh, that's pretty good, look at that. So that's that's a one, uh, SWR 1.1 and a half, just under 1.2. That's pretty, that's pretty remarkable. So we're gonna drop now down to channel one and see what uh, the SWR is there. Just a little higher, about 1.3. And then channel 40, and the needle isn't even moving. So I could split that difference, I could raise, slightly raise the antenna, just a fraction. Let me just key up again now. I could split the difference and I could get an SWR of 1.1, but to be honest, 
I'm going to leave that because, as I say, on channel 20, SWR pretty much 1.1. Um, that's perfect. Well, that's quite lucky. One adjustment. It doesn't normally happen that way. You're normally going to go backwards and forwards to get that. Perfect. Once you're happy with your SWR, now I'm, I was pretty very lucky to get that on the first attempt, but say I'd have adjusted that backwards and forwards, I'd now be have an SWR of 1.1, be very happy with that. Then it's a simple case of unbolting it from your pole on the ground and then mounting it on your proper pole on the side of your house. The SWR should not change. In fact, when you do put it higher and you get it above the roof line, in fact, it might even drop down slightly lower. But for this experiment, we're just going to leave it now on a pole. That's two metres off the deck. And then a little later on, we're going to go on to the 305 and we'll see if we can get a contact. Now, although the antenna will work just two metres off the deck, you can immediately see the problem of having it so low. As you can see there, I've got about F7 of noise. And that is typical of having a very low antenna where the base coil is round about house level. It's going to pick up all sorts of noise from the surrounding houses. It's not much you can do about it other than maybe try to move the antenna around a garden. I could put it further down the garden. I haven't got the coax um, length for this particular experiment. But you can experiment moving it around a garden. But ultimately, by getting the antenna higher, getting it above the roof line, that help, will help you solve some of the noise. Unfortunately, by having it low down, noise is going to be an issue. But when I go on to sideband later, I'm hoping that noise will drop down a little bit. Yeah, one niner, one niner radio check, please. One niner radio check. One nine for a radio check. One nine for a rig check, please. As you saw, as always, knobby no mates on the one nine. It goes like that on radio, even round here. You think it's busy all the time, but it's not. It can be very quiet. So what we're going to do, we'll set up the 9900 on sideband and I'll wait for the 305 to come alive on this afternoon. Hopefully the guys will be able to hear us and we'll get a radio check with that silver rod just two metres off the deck. Should be interesting. Friends have come back from Toronto in Canada um, and they are just so geared up for it. You know, they got, uh... Well the antenna's working and um, that's the guys there chatting on the 305. I'm going to get in on a radio check at the moment. This is a stone cold 9900 so we're off frequency while it warms up. But the antenna's certainly working. A bit of slush, a bit of slush on the road and uh, we're knackered aren't we? Yeah, that's true, mate, but we don't... <laughs> we just Phil, don't um, for, yeah, Phil, what's the, uh, what's the signal like to you? Uh, without going into numbers, uh, basically very, very similar um, to what you uh, what I had on your previous radio. It is just that uh, slightly tinniness, which is probably where the radio is warming up. But as far as signal and all radio, uh, all audio is concerned, uh, very similar to the first one. Oh, thank you for that radio report. Um, yeah, you're banging in about a signal 7 to uh, possibly a signal 8. And that's, that's very similar to what I was getting out of the Antron. Um, so considering this right aerial is so low, it is picking up a little bit of noise. And so I'm on a stone cold radio. Um, that's quite impressive actually, Phil. I know we're not that far away. Back to you. Side of it, um, I would have seen a huge amount of difference personally. I'd say just a part of the uh, slight tinniness on the audio. Oh, no, it's a Roger there. Well, maybe that doesn't say too much for my answer on 99, does it? <laughs> okay, let me go across if Steph's there. Uh, yes, yeah, Steph, do you copy Fred? Yeah, you're coming in here nice and strong, Fred, about five and five today. Uh, Roger there, Steph. Well, we're going on this antenna, and it is really low. You're about a seven and eight. Um, it's certainly doing the business. It's receiving really well. Uh, just got a little bit more noise than I would normally get. But yeah, getting a lovely signal from you, Steph. Over. Yeah, well, that, they are good radios for the ninety nine, don't they? Well, they do do the business, don't they? Uh, they certainly put out. It would probably be less if I was just on the uh, the standard power there. So, Steph, um, it's blooming cold, mate. What's happening with the weather? Well, it's going to get colder, so uh, next week um, I think you might be able to uh, expect some uh, 
Hello. Right, back on the uh, the SR8 now on the Antron 99. Everyone's coming in loud and proud. So thank you for uh, that radio report there, Dan, on the old silver rod. Oh yeah, yeah, you're back up to ten now. Uh, six or ten, radio five. You're back, mate. Uh, and uh, the other one was only. Yeah, Roger, well, everyone sounded okay on it. Once I got everyone clarified in, the radio was really, really cold. But, uh, I, you know, I think because it was so low on the ground, it, it's nice to know that I could always use it as a backup there. I'll go across to Steph. Yeah, you're sounding uh, back to your normal self, Steph. But, uh, yeah, it was it was a good experiment, Steph. It worked well. Yeah, it did, didn't it? That was quite, I, I was quite impressed with that, Fred. But you, you're stonking in now. And lovely audio, about five and eight. Steady five and eight now. I was just saying, uh, currently you're giving me an S9 almost into the, uh, the plus uh, dBs, etc., whereas Steph is, uh, is about a signal 5. Um, and I think I've learned from my own experience, you don't actually have the, have the antenna that high uh, to actually get uh, you know, a good bit of DXing or good contact out of it. Yeah, all copied there. Yeah, totally correct. I think the only difference I'm noticing is that when I had the 9900, I was getting probably about a S3, maybe an S4 of noise because the antenna was so low. It was S7 on FM. It was really bad on FM. But of course, now I've come up here with the Antron, I've literally got no noise at all on the band. And I think that's the difference. If you do have a low antenna, it will work and it'll definitely work. But there is much more chance that you're going to pick up local QRM and noise fill over. Roger that, yeah, no, I quite agree. If uh, if you put it up on a sort of uh, typical shed, it's going to be within, what, half a wavelength of, of the building, etc., whereas, you know, your Antron up on the roof is not going to have that problem. Back to you. I think that's the bottom line. I think that's the last uh, last comment we'll have on air. I think that's it. Okay, guys, I'll, I'll put it back to Dan. Let's just take a moment to talk about coaxial cables. First thing, it depends, really, if you're going to stay with the hobby. If, for example, you're willing to put up an antenna outside on a pole, on a stand, and you're not sure whether you're going to stick with the hobby, you just want to see who's around the area, I would advise not spending too much money on your coaxial cable because you won't get the money back if you decide to quit the hobby. And for that, just the simple RG58 coax is absolutely fine for a temporary short run, say 10 or 15 meters from your antenna. The only downside of RG58 is it's not the most resilient coaxial cable. If you leave it outside for a long time, I found it can split and it's not very low loss. So if you're going to go over 15 meters, say 25 meters, something like that, I think you need to probably spend a little bit more because you will start to suffer a loss. But what I did, the next upgrade from RG58, I went to RG8, sometimes known as Mini 8. As you can see there, it's a little bit thicker than RG58, but it's not too thick that if you are going to bring it into the, into the house, you don't have to drill a particularly big hole. Hopefully, you can do what I did. You can go through a vent, save you drilling holes. It's also a higher quality coaxial cable. It tends to be more flexible. It's more resilient outside. It doesn't split or weather as bad. It's lower loss than RG58 and also it's not that much more expensive it's quite affordable the next cable that I chose and this gets my recommendation is RG213 this is a very very tough cable perfectly suitable if for example you're going to put your antenna straight up on the side of your house and you're going to leave it up there for some time this is the stuff to go for downsides of this is that it's not flexible it really isn't, especially if you try and put this up mid-winter, it gets very, very stiff to use. So you may have to um, heat it slightly with a hairdryer, I've had to do that. Again, if you're going to come through the house, it does mean you're going to have to drill a bigger hole. It's also low loss. Um, I'm not sure how it compares to Mini 8, to be honest with you. I mean, some say it's a lower loss. Uh, I'm not all that sure. It's certainly a very, very tough cable. This is what I use from my Antron 99 straight into my Shed Shack. 
and everything in my shed shack is RG213. I only used Mini 8 coming into the house because I didn't particularly want to drill a hole and I had to go through a vent. Another cable that the guys absolutely rave about on the 305 is a cable made by the Italian Messi and Poloni company. I believe it's called Ultraflex. It's a little bit more expensive and the connection cables, the 259s, are a bit more expensive as well and there is a bit of a procedure to put on. Again, I, I think that's a, probably an upgrade um, for the sake of this video, it's not something you probably want to go for straight away, but if you do get into the hobby, it's an option, as opposed to 213, maybe you want to go straight to the Ultraflex, uh, but again, it depends on the uh, depth of your pockets. I'm going to bring this one to a close now. Once again, I hope it's helpful if you're thinking about coming back to radio and you're a bit mystified by everything. I'm trying to explain everything very easy terms, very easy to understand. As always, there will be a lot of more experienced radio guys that know an awful lot more to me watching these videos so if you've got any suggestions be it coaxial cables or maybe cheap antennas that you've tried in the past and you want to just leave those in the comments that is most welcome these videos are going to be up on the channel for a long time people do go back and read the comments looking for additional information so please leave a comment so that's about it from uh, Fred in the shed I think the next video we'll have to discuss power supplies if you're setting up a home-based antenna or you're going to try and connect a CB radio to your your car so we'll go through PSU power supply units again we'll go for low cost going up to medium cost and we'll see how we get on to that so that's it for me there's the old thumbs up from Fred if you're liking these videos if they're helping you at all please give me the thumbs up down below share them with your friends who may be interested in getting onto radio but as always please take care of each other look after yourselves catch you on the next one cheers